pelting of rotten eggs and mud inside UP campus to former Armed Forces Chief of Staff Hermogenes Esperon, the burning of chairs of some PUP protesters against the impending tuition hike, the heckling of activists against President Aquino in several occasions. And recently, the confrontation between Budget Secretary Buchabad and UP activists about the Disbursement Acceleration Program. These are some of the methods through which activists express their dissent to the government. But some believe that these acts have gone overboard and have become a display of hooliganism. Some faculty members of the UP School of Economics in a statement said the act against Butch Abad is a blow to UP's honor. UP President Alfredo Pascual also released a statement saying that they are investigating this disappointing act, echoing the palace's dismay. But the Student Alliance for the Advancement of Democratic Rights in UP, or Stand UP, the organizer of that protest said they will not apologize and that Secretary Abad deserves it as he represents the ongoing greed and corruption in the government. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. Tonight, we'll weigh in if the recent run-in of militant students uh, to Secre uh, Secretary Budget uh, Butchabad is a legitimate act of protest or a display of violence. Our debate question for tonight is, is the recent confrontation between UP activists and Butchabad justified? Good evening, I'm Rod Nipomoseno, and this is Opposing Views. Joining us tonight in our discussion is Professor Danilo Arau, Faculty Advisor of the Student Alliance for the Advancement of Democratic Rights in UP, or STAND UP. Professor Danny, good evening. Yes, good evening, Rob. Welcome back to Opposing Views. Yes, of course. I'm happy to be here. All right. Uh, can you give us your quick thoughts uh, on this uh, debate question? you think that uh, the actions of the UP students were justified? It's very much justified if you look at the culture of dissent and the culture of protest mm. at uh, not just the University of the Philippines, but uh, in other places of the country. Mm. Uh, please remember that the so-called violent acts mm. only constitute what? The throwing of crumpled papers against a mm. particular government official who is said to be the chief architect of the disbursement acceleration program. It is a symbol of collective as mm -hmm. to why this government official and the administration insist on implementing a program that is already declared unconstitutional by no less than the, than the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So it's very much justified for me. All thank right. you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Danny. And on the opposing side is Professor Silvia Claudio of the UP College of Social Work and Community Development. Uh, good evening, uh, Professor Silvia. Good evening. And welcome again. Yes, uh, thank show. you. Nice to be yes. here again. Yeah, your quick thoughts on this uh, debate question. Uh, do you think it was justified, the acts of the UP well, students? Well, uh, no, not really. And I, I read the report and looked at the, um, the incident itself. Uh, I thought it was a little bit more than crumpled papers. I heard mm -hmm. there were coins tossed mm -hmm. and that they did try to collar him or touch him. Mm -hmm. And my, my view is uh, for this particular incident, wrong place in not not in the university should we do that because he was invited as well mm -hmm. uh, and perhaps wrong timing mm -hmm. uh, and maybe we can discuss that a little yeah, bit more a little more, a little bit more in yeah. detail all right thank you very much and again thank you for joining us this evening so uh, again uh, i'd like to uh, discuss again your initial thoughts no? uh, when this when this happened obviously uh, there were a lot of uh, claims no? there was a, there were some claims by secretary abad and when he uh, uh, reported this or made statements uh, to the media um, and then uh, obviously there was a statement on the part of the UP students. Um, uh, Professor Danny, your initial thoughts, uh, what, what went on, uh, went through your mind uh, when, you, when you heard about this and uh, do you think that this is at par with what is expected from UP students? Well, I wasn't there when the confrontation mm -hmm. happened. Actually, mm -hmm. I was in Malate, Manila for mm -hmm. a family gathering but I was duty-bound as a faculty advisor of Stand UP to mm -hmm. ask 
what really happened. Because they were there. Yeah, because they were there. Mm. And from what I gathered, it appears that, uh, yes, uh, the crumpled papers were thrown, mm -hmm. but as far as the coin throwing was concerned and the so-called uh, placuello or yeah. the, the, um, collar, the, the coloring, coloring of yeah. the, if such a word exists, of Butchabad mm -hmm. uh, didn't uh, wasn't instigated by Stand UP. Assuming mm -hmm. that it happened, uh, it wasn't. It, you think it, it wasn't outsiders were, were were involved? Probably because if you look at the press release of Anakbaya National, which is a different organization, uh, there was mention about coins. Mm -hmm. As regards placards and the collars, uh, the data would be quite insufficient well, to judge. As, assuming but nevertheless, was, yeah. Assuming right. for the sake of argument that oh. such things really happened, yeah. coins. Would it would it really constitute violence? Mm -hmm. uh, was there harm? done on Butch Abad. Mm -hmm. Well, his pride may have been hurt, his mm -hmm. ego may have been shattered mm -hmm. because of what happened, but he did not sustain any serious injuries. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, he was even allowed to get inside his SUV. And one little detail that wasn't mentioned publicly is the fact that the guards of Abad even mentioned to the stand-up students, Sagasaan na yan. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so there was actually harassment being mm -hmm. done, ironically, on the students who were protesting when in fact mm -hmm. it's supposed to be their campus and they have the right to express dissent. Mm -hmm. And why should we welcome that kind of a person who, as we mentioned a while ago, is the chief instigator of the presidential pork barrel? So we shouldn't lose sight and we shouldn't uh, be discussing too much time as to whether or not the acts were violent. Mm -hmm. We should be focusing on the contextual accuracy of the issue, which mm -hmm. is the disbursement acceleration whether program. Whether contextually that reaction yes. was uh, merited. That's All correct. Right. Uh, Professor Sylvia, do you think the, the, the students went overboard? Of, uh, again, as mentioned by Professor Danny, that there, uh, there are some conflicting reports whether the students themselves threw uh, points or whether, whether there was coloring or uh, pulling of the sleeves. Uh, as claimed by, by Secretary Abad. Yes. But do you think, assuming those things happen, do, do yes. you think that uh, the students may have just gone a little bit overboard uh, they, in this situation? Yeah, I, I base my, um, my, you know, my, my judgment on the st official statement of the UP School of Economics Student Council, mm -hmm. who invited um, um, Secretary okay. Abad mm -hmm. uh, as one of the one of the people one of the groups who sponsored that that talk mm -hmm. and they did mention that there was a group of students and non-students um, the statement was uh, akbayan anakbayan, anakbayan rather, national and and uh, the another group affiliated with stand up mm -hmm. so uh, they, they sort of thought that this was one group together that this mm -hmm. group of yep. both kind of, students and non-students non had had really ba uh, barred all exits to make sure that they would catch uh, Secretary Abad. Mm -hmm. And the UP students, UP School of Economic Student Council, mm -hmm. in fact, denounced the, the, what they, it was their term, the violence. So I think two issues here, and perhaps we should uh, also look at whether, no matter how incensed you are mm -hmm. at what a person does, mm -hmm. is it really uh, in the university a call for that kind of aggressive and hostile reaction yeah. to a person who was also invited. Actually, the UP School of Economics and the UP uh, Student Council and the UP Student Council itself of Diliman had un invited Secretary And what do you Secretary mean aggressive Abad. and host hostile uh, action? Because obviously, I think uh, here it's sometimes a matter of definition. Eh? Mm -mm. Some people might not be too insulted with a crumpled piece of paper or mm -mm. perhaps egg, an egg, for example, uh -oh. uh, or, or a slipper <laughs> that happened to some U.S. presidents. Yes. Um, but uh, in your mind, what is, when do you draw the line? What is aggressive and hostile behavior? Well, I, I put myself, uh, I've experienced also some amount of aggression, mm -hmm. mostly verbal. Verbal, from, yes. From student activists uh, and is this who acceptable? quite don't agree. <laughs> well, you know. Is this uh, acceptable? Uh, the, let, me, let me give you an, a, yeah. an example. A friend said that in one of the discussion boards about this issue, mm -hmm. uh, where I have taken a stand against it, mm -hmm. somebody commented, Kalad karin na yan si Claudio sa lansangan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, ang reaction ko don, well, of course, it's it's. I mean, it's words, but, but it has it's, a, yeah. a violent it's kind of connotation. It's a little connotation. bit, yeah, it's yeah, a little yeah. bit. Okay. And I, I um, coming now from the, well, I said place, no? Kasi UP, yeah. 
UP is really a place where I think we should be more mm -hmm. allowing of all the views mm -hmm. and yeah. perhaps putting a premium on letting people be comfortable in stating. Mm -hmm. Even those right. ideas that maybe I personally mm -hmm. uh, don't really want to hear. No? Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I also don't like the DAP. Yeah. I also have publicly called, in fact, for the resignation of Secretary, Secretary Abad. Abad in mm -hmm. my column in, in Rappler. Mm -hmm. So it, it isn't, I think, uh, for me, no, uh, a matter of how you stand on a particular issue. Mm -hmm. It's really the question of how we express our dissent mm -hmm. in a particular venue. Okay. Professor Danny, when yeah. is violence acceptable to you? Um, and as a follow-up to the, uh, there, no, you think uh, there's an acceptable reason in this situation, there was an acceptable reason why there was such, I guess, actions. Uh, the, the, first of all, first off, uh, you think, when is violence to you kind of acceptable? Of course, violence can never be acceptable in the legal arena mm. because, uh, well, it's not just the law that we're talking about. We're also talking about conduct uh, mm -hmm. unbecoming of people. But in situations where there are extreme measures that are undertaken by certain groups, you have to ask yourself, why do they have to resort to that? Mm -hmm. Why can't they be, quote unquote, civil yes. or have good manners and right conduct? Yeah, it's right. because you cannot insist on civility at a time when the powers that be are imposing their will with impunity. Mm -hmm. Because the culture of impunity should be taken into account as regards uh, the insistence of the powers that be mm -hmm. to continue a program that's unconstitutional and to not account for the 10 billion pesos of DAP from 2010 mm -hmm. to 2013. And the data would show that those who benefited from the DAP are allies of the Aquino administration, mm -hmm. starting off with Abaya, who's the head mm -hmm. of the Liberal Party and Transportation Secretary. Mm -hmm. We have Speaker Belmonte. And number six is the wife of the Budget Secretary. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep this in mind mm -hmm. in order to properly contextualize the actions of the mm -hmm. students because and that, if why we there was such an anger yes because if we don't look at the context then we will just assume that this thing happened in a vacuum mm -hmm. so therefore we will just judge the action based on what it is minus the context mm -hmm. in journalism which i've been teaching since 2001 we look at two kinds of accuracy Factual accuracy, we cannot be selective of the facts. And number two, contextual accuracy. Right. So that's where we can appreciate the bigger picture. And our appeal to our audience would be to ensure that there is openness in terms of uh, looking at the issue the at hand. Context, because okay. it's not the violence that we're talking about of the students, it's the violence of the state, rather. All right. Okay, at this point, we need to take a short break. Meanwhile, you can react online via Facebook at facebook.com slash Opposing views on 9TV or tweet your comments at opposing underscore views. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Depomoceno. We have with us a Professor Danilo Arau and a Professor Silvia Claudio. Our debate question for tonight is the recent confrontation between UP activists against Butch Abad justified. All right, uh, Professor Danny, um, what's the act against um, Secretary Abad? You think, um, do you think that that's the sentiment of the whole nation? Uh, because that seems to be what, uh, what the students are saying, that we represent the sentiment of the, of the country. Uh, do you think that that's a, an accurate statement? When we say sentiments of the country, we're not talking of whether or not it is shared by the majority of the population. Mm. Because when you analyze social issues, you take into account what's good for the basic sectors of society. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're speaking out for them means that you're trying your best to institute social change, something that you do for the better. Mm -hmm. So, for example, as far as corruption is concerned, uh, we don't need to conduct a survey mm -hmm. whether or not people are pro-corruption or anti-corruption. Mm -hmm. It's common sense. Yeah. So the same thing applies to the disbursement acceleration program. It's been already declared unconstitutional. So why is it that the government uh, would implement still such an mm -hmm. unconstitutional policy? Yeah. So it's a cut and dry situation. And mm -hmm. I think the basic point of contention here between Guy and I is the action itself of the students. And as I said, it's context that we should be talking about mm. here. And we should not be selective of the facts. We are all 
too much preoccupied with how Secretary Abad was hurt. But the data from Stand UP would show that there were three students who were hurt. Mm -hmm. Even the chair of Stand Up, Charlotte uh, France, uh, sustained hurt. injuries okay. uh, as a result of the scuffle with the guards and the police and, mm -hmm. uh, and other people protecting Abad. So mm -hmm. these things would have to be taken into account. Stand UP tried to talk to the two staff and one student who were allegedly hurt because of the scuffle. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the SE Student Council did was to withhold their names dahil ayaw daw magpakilala. But we'll take their word yeah. for that. But there is an effort from, for Stand UP to address such concerns mm -hmm. because that's how open-minded these students are. Okay, Professor Guy, uh, yeah. do you think that the actions of, of the Stand UP students and perhaps those who are there, no? maybe yes. Akbayan, do you think it represented uh, the sentiment of, of the nation, uh, and I, I'm talking about the actions, uh, maybe not the, the side that they were taking. I think, uh, as, as pointed, yeah. out, pointed out by Professor Danny, uh, whether it was, uh, that sentiment is majority or minority, they would, they would have done the same thing. No? But do you think, though, that the, the actions themselves, we, do you think that that's consistent to what probably the majority of the people would want to see? I think the, the controversy itself, mm -hmm. the, that has now in fact centered on whether what they did was right or wrong, mm -hmm. shows you that perhaps there was an error here in estimating the sentiments of the people. Mm -hmm. Because I, I would agree with uh, uh, Professor Danny here, that what we should really have highlighted what was, was what he calls the context. Mm -hmm. But what I'm seeing in media and, and what we're discussing in fact here is, is really Mali yung mga estudyante, ang babastos na Manila. You're hearing comments like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're an activist that wants persuasion, you should very, very uh, be critical of your, the tactics you use. Kung, if you're able to win over people. Mm -hmm. So again, if it's not the issue, then did we win over people? But let me back, backtrack a little bit. No? Mm -hmm. Because I also would think that there is a context, and the context is the violence of a system is very difficult different from the actual physical violence that I could do, mm -mm. let's say, to you, Rod, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And I th I'm very, as a woman who's been working on violence against women, mm -hmm. and before that, on people who have been tortured by the Marcos dictatorship, yeah. I am very, very careful about the slide conceptually. Mm -hmm. When you label something violent because it's systemic, mm -hmm. and then the slide into physical, physical violence. violence. Because, because for you're, me, say, you're saying, both are violence. Yeah. yeah, but they're not the same. Mm -hmm. And we cannot answer mm -hmm. systemic violence uh, with violence to one person. Mm -hmm. And, and um, while there is indeed a power context here, and I would agree that the system, Abad and Aquino, certainly hold all the cards in many situations. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding, because of my work, is that we have to take into consideration that even um, uh, the situation where Ibad was in, he was actually in a kung physical violence. He, I think he was at a disadvantage here mm -hmm. because even if he had security, mm -hmm. there were far more protesters who could have hurt him. Mm -hmm. That's one. And of course, uh, I saw the video. I think the physical violence whether that's mild or not is a matter of contention, was instigated, do, by, do the, instigated have, by the student. If he didn't have the guards, do you think he would have been physically hurt, you think? I believe so. And yes. I also think then that, because I, I have, I, it's clear to me that if you are uh, being physically threatened, then perhaps you can have some amount of physical protection, retaliation mm. to yourself. Okay. So as I've always said, um, I think before we decide whether violence physical is justified, you have to be very, very reluctant to use it mm. because it's often it's probably, very probably wrong. probably the last resort. Oh, it's probably very wrong. You right. have to look very carefully at whether you want this mm -hmm. to happen. And then, of course, you have to expect a certain amount of re retaliation, retaliation from the person. But my, my bottom line here is I really uh, have seen too often this this um, conceptual slide saying mm. they were violent naman symbolically. Mm. And, and my appeal really is please then also win the, the uh, oppose symbolic violence with symbolic violence. Mm. Uh, fight systemic violence with systemic methods. Mm -hmm. And then if it is then physically violent, I think it's very justified for you mm -hmm. then right. to also uh, retaliate with physical violence. But mm -hmm. I think morally, 
dangerous talaga yon. Dangerous. Eh. They, 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 dangerous they, talaga they, yung, they, yung you think the violence is just the same. They went it's beyond not, the line. Right. It's not. Physical violence is not the same as systemic violence. Yeah. It okay. just isn't. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Dr. Okay. Uh, Professor Danny, your, your thoughts? <laughs> well, again, we're not talking of physical violence here. We're talking of throwing of crumpled papers against mm -hmm. the secretary. Okay? Mm -hmm. We can grant even the throwing of coins. coins yeah. I mean, he wasn't, it's not as if he got serious yeah. injuries out of it. Well, if it's it was a uh, 10 centavo coin or 5 centavo coin i'm sure there was nothing but yeah the moment you throw five well yeah five pesos unfortunately coins, we don't know what kind of funds were yeah. being thrown but knowing yeah. the students they don't have, up students usually activists don't have that much money so i doubt if they'll be throwing you know hundreds of coins against yeah. uh, the secretary but nevertheless we do agree that physical violence has no place in the university that much is a given but the question here is did violence really happen that mm -hmm. fateful night mm -hmm. of september 17. Yeah. so we go back to that issue and uh, the belief that uh, had Abad not been duly protected, he would be physically harmed by Stand UP. Again, we mm. ask the question, is there a track record of Stand UP and its allied organizations engaging in violent mm. behavior? Beating up students, for example, during elections or, you know, kicking and uh, mm. punching any students that would disagree with them? I doubt it. There's none. Okay. Because there's none. And I, in fact, I would be the first to castigate Stand UP if they would resort to that. Mm. In fact, elections, student council elections in the university, while they may have been shouting matches every now and then or heckling, uh, they did not resort to physical violence. Of course, the exception would be the fraternities because yeah. sometimes there would be fraternity rumbles related to the elections. Yeah. But nevertheless, Stand UP as itself has exercised restraint even mm -hmm. because uh, I would agree, had they wanted to hurt yeah. physically a bad, mm -hmm. There are 50 to 60 or so students that night, and they could have done it. Yeah. But it, based on the video, we may be looking at the same video, but with different frameworks, they did not engage in any violent act. They did not punch the guards so that they can get, so that they can get out of the way and then hurt a bad in the process. Yeah. What they did was to throw yeah. papers, now, some, because it's, a symbol, it's not symbolic violence, but a symbolic protest. Yeah. Now, some sectors were, have sort of like described your, the students as hooligans. <laughs> you, you know, do you think that they fall under that uh, description? Well, Guy and I are both editors of the Philippine Collegian in our youth, and we know that the definition of hooligan is usually a young man who engages in violent behavior in a group or a gang. Mm -hmm. So we're talking here of two things. Number one, young man. Remember that the chair of Stand UP is a female student at that. Mm -hmm. So by that by virtue of that, hooligan is out of the question. And that, that the other term has to do with violent behavior. So there's no violence there. And then involvement in a gang. Mm -hmm. It's not like saying that if a female student is, going, is dating a particular Stand UP member, is it like saying that she's dating a gangster? I don't mm -hmm. think so. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's not a gangster group. It's a political, mm -hmm. party political party that stands for certain principles that Guy may not agree mm -hmm. with, but nevertheless, we have to respect mm -hmm. that kind of ideological persuasion because uh, but can there in their be, view, let's say, for the good of the country. Perhaps uh, you know, a, a burning of effigy or something, or, or perhaps maybe placards that are really huge. Does it have to be a throwing of, of particular things, even if it was crumpled paper? You know, um, Again, you're right. Maybe it's not it's not violence to you, but for some people, it it does invade their personal space. Yeah, it and may it, be it, going it, overboard allegedly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's the purpose, I think, in it's order to, to, to draw attention. To draw attention, number one. But more than drawing attention, it is to give a wake up call to the powers that be that stand up is not taking things sitting down. But taking from uh, Professor Guy's statement yeah. earlier, I think, and if you read social media, there seems to have been at least. Uh, sympathy on the part of Secretary Abad. There, there yeah, were people who definitely. were uh, saying that you can't correct a wrong by, by doing something wrong. By yeah. doing that, then it, it becomes wrong and you become the same as the person you're, you're complaining about. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a good point. But we have to also balance it with those who sympathize with Stand mm. UP. Now, granting for the sake of argument that majority of the population uh, have a negative reaction to what happened, it, means, it's, it simply means that there is a bigger challenge for Stand UP and other so-called activist organizations to try to, to, what Guy said, win over people to mm. explain contextually what happened. Because, mm. for, for example, we all have a clear appreciation of what the disbursement acceleration program is and why it's presidential pork mm -hmm. and why our taxpayers' money are being wasted mm -hmm. by the powers that be. Okay. So 
if people would learn to appreciate that, then more or less, it's either they would side with the students or at least they would be open-minded enough right? or oh. sympathetic enough yeah. to understand the situation, reminiscent of what happened during the, the Diliman Commune and the first quarter storm, which mm -hmm. was actually very violent, but still, mm -hmm. in the annals of history, it is judged as something that was absolutely necessary. All right. All right, we need to take a short break uh, again. Uh, more on the issue of the alleged hooliganism of the UP students. Uh, you're watching Opposing Views. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views. I'm Rod Depomoceno. Still with us, Professor Danilo Arau faculty advisor of the Student Alliance for the Advancement of Democratic Rights in UP or Stand UP, and Professor Silvia Claudio of the UP College of Social Work and Community Development. Our question for tonight, is the recent confrontation between UP activists and Secretary Butchabad justified? Now, uh, just before the break, uh, we were discussing kind of like the levels of uh, violence. violence. You know, maybe a certain we, we, we can all agree that there, there are certain yeah. levels of violence. Of and I think, uh, prof, uh, Professor Guy, you, you wanted to uh, make a comment on the uh, discussion of Professor Danny insofar as what is probably acceptable violence? Yes. Or, or the, difference, the different types of violence and what is acceptable violence? Yes. Is there such thing, is there a degree of violence that's acceptable in, in this scenario? Yes, because I, I, I'm a bit surprised that it became an issue about whether there was violence or not because in the discussion boards that I had been uh, looking at mm -hmm. and engaging in, the real question is whether this just violence was justified. Mm -hmm. So now the question of whether, how do we determine yeah. if it's violence or not? And again, in my work with torture survivors and with women who have experienced violence, I often see this, that the victim who experienced it is already saying, I felt violated. I don't, I don't think this was right. I mm -hmm. felt threatened, no? Mm -hmm. And then the person who did the violence, the, the husband who's mm -hmm. doing the battering, or mm -hmm. especially the torturer. Although I, certainly I wouldn't compare mm -hmm. the UP students to a torturer. Yeah, to a, to <laughs> yeah but, but I guess the point I'm just trying to make is mm -hmm. that really I would believe, uh, I think we should base on the reactions of the person whether they felt they experienced violence mm -hmm. and whether they felt threatened. Now, that's the first, no? Kahit sabihin mo mataas yung standard ko. The reason why I'm appealing for a high standard is, again, the context for me is not just that, but mm -hmm. this is the University of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It's an academic institution. And the National University. And the National University. Two things. I've heard na I, we're paying your taxes behave properly. Perhaps that is a, mm -hmm. a smaller argument. The bigger one for me really is that there are certain places where the free exchange of ideas in situations where people feel safe, mm -hmm. including uh, Secretary Abad, who many, I would agree with the UP students, perhaps we are incensed mm -hmm. by his behavior. No, but mm -hmm. anyone, whether our enemy or not, should be able to feel that they are freely able to express mm. their sentiments. And probably defend themselves. And defend themselves yeah. in an oh. academic institution. Perhaps outside in Plaza Miranda, mm -hmm. it might be a different issue. But mm. in UP, I think we really need to put a so, very, very high standard on the so safety what you, what of you're expression. Saying, of Professor Guy, you're saying that, that the standard should be different in UP vis a vis, let's say, Plaza Miranda or. Anywhere Maybe else. not in terms of violence, but in terms of expressing ideas. To be to be quite frank, it, whether it's Secretary Abad or any student of mine or a co-professor, if anybody said to me in UP I felt threatened because I expressed an idea, mm -hmm. physically threatened, which is actually what Secretary mm -hmm. Abad said, That's not then ideal. it's not, not acceptable ideal. to not me. Acceptable. That right. that is not what should happen in an academic institution. Okay, Professor Danny, your, your, your turn, well, your thoughts on that. I guess the victim here would not be Secretary Abad. Uh, I'm not sure if Guy and I agree, but uh, the victim here would be 
corny as it may sound, the Filipino in general who felt betrayed by the actions not corny. of the budget secretary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because uh, we're all of us. Yeah. May we're I just interrupt? General, just but, uh, on this okay, point, no I heard yeah. no yeah. pwedeng yeah. mag-interrupt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just on this, course, this No problem. Yeah. Here again, Professor Danny is yes. my point about sliding into different concepts of violence. Mm. Because the victim of the physical violence was Secretary Abad. So he's a victim here, right? Of the physical violence. What when you violence say, are we talking about well, here? Well, throwing of coins and paper. Okay, and so then, it's a violent so, behavior yeah, already. So, okay. so let's, let's we'll grant that. Again, I will just... Uh, the reason I wanted to interrupt was that's yes. my main point. I think it's very difficult to slide conceptually from saying ang victima ang Filipino Tang, people. Of course they are. Corruption, that, misgovernance, of course they're the victims. And right? But this is the systemic violence which we all condemn. And therefore... But to, to, to elide systemic violence with physical violence in order to justify physical violence, I think this is taking a morally what's the proper, difficult... What's the proper reaction though? I think we should ask ourselves... Yes, go ahead. We should therefore ask ourselves why was Abad a victim of a symbolic protest because, well, there is a difference of opinion as regards violence, but let's look at the protest action itself, okay? So why was he a victim in the first place? It's because he was responsible for this, okay? Now, it's true. He felt threatened and anybody, any government official who would trample on the rights of people who would be responsible for the violations of the basic rights, socioeconomic rights, human rights, political and civil rights, mm -hmm. the message is clear because of what Stand Up did. They're not welcome in the university. Mm -hmm. They're not welcome anywhere where people are suffering. Mm -hmm. So we have to contextualize again why was Abad a victim of a symbolic prote protest? Why was he at the receiving end of the crumpled papers? He, he brought it to himself, that's what you're saying? He deserved the it. The system that he belongs to brought it to himself because, yes, he is a chief architect of the disbursement acceleration program after all. Mm -hmm. If it were a middle gov if it were a middle level manager of the, of the DBM who went to the School of Economics, I don't think the students will have the same reaction. Mm -hmm. But this is the face of mm -hmm. the disbursement acceleration program. So conceptually, it's valid that he be the subject of a symbolic mm -hmm. protest. Now, let me shift gears a bit. Do you think that this uh, whole situation do you think it was a blow to UP's honor? If at Do you think all, it was a disgrace? If at all it reaffirms what UP stands for and what the university should stand for, which is what? A basic venue for dissent, a basic venue for ferreting out what should be an injustice. The late SP Lopez and even the other UP president, Vicente Cinco, actually encouraged activism among students mm. and even mass actions. It, I was going to ask you, do, do you think that this, what the students did here, do you think it differed from the activism that they, they usually practice in the past? Well, there is consistency in terms of ideological persuasion. But of course, in terms of strategies and tactics, uh, Guy is correct in saying that there are certain adjustments uh, along the way. In fact, I can even argue that the throwing of crumpled papers is a step back mm -hmm. to the throwing of rotten tomatoes, rotten eggs, and even green paint <laughs> against the UPLD it's, Chancellor. It's less. It's, it's less, less violent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, not less violent, but, but it's a different form. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as... Well, for practical reasons, it's not as expensive mm -hmm. as buying tomatoes and eggs yes. because you just yung, buy paper. Naman yung tomatoes. Right. No, yeah. right. Professor Gar symbolic yeah. violence. Mm. You can't be a victim of symbolic violence. Symbolic uh, protest. Symbolic protest. protest. Mm. You can be the subject of symbolic protest. But you can be, can't be a victim of it. Yes, but you can be a victim of sim, sim, systemic or even symbolic violence. But when that happens, we are all victims. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I would say that basing on Secretary Abad's reaction and I have laid down the moral basis of that. He was the victim of physical violence and again for me really it's really an appeal not to confuse the two because we, yeah. we will, if we do we justify like the torturer and like the batterer physical violence against another human being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To say therefore also that anyone is not welcome in UP to me goes against the very to say their ideas mm. goes against the very UP. core of the university. Anyone has an idea, and he came to explain. Huh? Mm. Professor uh, Danny said uh, oh, corrupt people are not welcome in UP. No. Oh, they're ah, welcome. Okay, so. okay no, thank their you. Their corruption is not welcome in UP. But corrupt people are but okay. But if they want to explain their ideas, and here's, here's where I, I'm going now. Mm. He, it's not also true that the tradition of student activism is always this way because I also was a student activist in my day, and we mm -hmm. studied 
we studied, and there are also great instances where we mm -hmm. came up, even through martial law, we would come mm -hmm. up to the government officials, enter the forum, and whip them mm -hmm. with superior arguments mm -hmm. and, and, and show, really, the, mm -hmm. the context that uh, Professor Arau is, is mm -hmm. trying to show. Yeah. So there has been a long history mm -hmm. of students not pounding their fists because their arguments are weak or pounding <laughs> yeah. on the table yeah. because their arguments are weak. You know yeah. that saying, you know right? That saying, yeah. There has been, in fact, I think more consistent mm -hmm. with the student activism that is the tradition in UP is this very great set of argumentations that make your point that explained the issue that put, would have put Secretary Abad what? to shame because I really believe mm. that there is if a mistake in the spot, in the put him in the spot. Yeah, but so the question really is, which of these different tactics that is in UP it's traditions more effective, more would have more. been the right thing to use? All right. Yeah, we have to yes. remember that mm. in the Bali Taktakan uh, Forum, uh, the question and answer portion was only five minutes long and the students and other audiences were only required to write down their questions. So there's no way to engage Secretary Abad. That's, that's why uh, the stand-up uh, members and allies ended up waiting outside so that he can be properly engaged. Okay. But the problem is uh, there was that lack of factual appreciation among the public, hence the misunderstanding. All right. Uh, there are a lot of comments coming in, and, and uh, I'd like to quote several comments, and i like your reaction sure. on these comments. Uh, we have the, uh, you have Tony Lavinia, Dean uh, oh, yeah. of the okay. Ateneo College of Law, uh, and his comment was, uh, one of my former students uh, re reposted the article on Secretary Abad being mobbed at UP uh, with this comment. I agree fully with him, and I quote, only time will speak up on this. Secretary Abad has done more for this country than any activist can do or imagine. Definitely yeah. has done a lot more. Mm. in terms of uh, corrupting uh, our money and plundering our nation's economy. Definitely, he did a lot. So thank you, Tony, for that comment. All right. My reaction, so, Professor Guy, yeah, my reaction has, is always that moral certainty of the evil of the other person mm. is no excuse for going into violence. Because, mm. again, uh, the torturer is morally certain. Mm. Uh, Palparan did this, uh, the torturers that uh, in, during martial law did this. I, ISIS claims this. ISIS, ISIS claims is this. Moral, the uh, batterer claims yeah. this. So moral certainty of the evil of the other person, again, does mm -hmm. not justify physical violence. Okay, and at this point, I, I'd like to quote another mm -hmm. okay. uh, uh, important person in the, uh, the uh, world of, uh, well, in the education field. Father Renilio Aquino, uh, who is the Dean of uh, San Beda College, uh, there is no justification, according to him, there is no justification for rudeness, not the ugly that, uh, form that it took when students at what is supposed to be the country's premier university shoved, collared, and pelted Secretary Butch Abad, dap or no dap. Rudeness is going back on what centuries of living in the uh, civitas should have uh, taught us uh, your thoughts on, on that uh, again uh, we have to yep. properly qualify what we mean by rudeness mm -hmm. because there is a symbolic protest mm -hmm. and a symbolic protest cannot be civil or refined uh, by its very nature because it tends to disrupt something that we normally see mm -hmm. for example the pretension of peace and calm in the university was uh, was obviously disrupted because of the mass action mm -hmm. and it reminded us not just of the tradition of dissent in the university mm -hmm. but the tradition of continuing struggle in philippine society in general because there should be something wrong in a situation where students would go through such creative measures to ensure that the message would be sent mm. to Secretary Abad as well as other government officials who are screwing mm. not just the people but the economy in general. Mm. This, yeah, symbolic yeah, violence need not, uh, symbolic protest need not be rude. It only has to be effective. Mm. And even rude non-symbolic pro protests can be quite disruptive. I will, mm. of course, a very good example is Gandhi. Mm -hmm. They were never rude mm -hmm. nor violent. In but fact, they, they allowed themselves to be physically beat up, mm -hmm. but it did sort they were, they were of very accepted. much push the anti-colonial yeah. anti, the anti struggle and the liberation struggle of right. India. So I don't think we should, again, confuse yeah. symbolic protest necessarily mm -hmm. with violence. Mm -hmm. Symbolic protest, I think, should be, because it's symbolic, mm -hmm. should be effective, mm -hmm. and I think it, in this situation, it, it hasn't been. All right. Okay. We need to take a short break. Uh, don't go away. When we, come back, when we come back, the results of our online poll 
on the issue and the final words of our guests. Stay tuned, you're watching Opposing News. Welcome back. This is Opposing Views. I'm Rod Nepomuceno. Still with us is Professor Danilo Arau and Professor Silvia Claudio. The question, is the recent confrontation between UP activists and Secretary Butch Abad justified? Now, um, I was supposed to uh, uh, throw in more questions, but uh, I'd like to read more comments. No? It looks okay. like this is a, a very <laughs> heated topic yeah, and no problem, we're yeah. getting a lot of uh, uh, comments from uh, important people. Uh, this one is from uh, the Ako Bicol Party List representative, uh, Rodel uh, Batukabe. Okay. Uh, and he said, as an alumnus of, uh, of the UP School of Economics, I'm ashamed that uh, within the bastion of economic freedom, or academic freedom rather, there is a bigoted, misguided, and intolerant minority that does not know how to respect the views of others. And uh, I'll read another uh, statement, this time from Senator Pia Cayetano. UP's academic freedom gives everyone the right to speak up to challenge ideas, debate with passion, and fight for one's principles. But this freedom does not include uh, the right to physically assault anyone just because you disagree with his or her own views. Uh, I'll let you uh, yeah. <laughs> comment on this, uh, Professor Danny, because obviously this is against your, your view. Yeah, well, it's like this. We do respect the opinion of mm. uh, our legislators here, but we have to remember again, was there really a physical assault in the first place? Because what happened was a throwing of crumpled papers. That's mm -hmm. it, according to Stand UP. And even assuming that there were coins that were pelted and placards, mm -hmm. and there was a, you know, being, uh, a bad being uh, pulled Colored by the collard yeah. or whatever. So the point here is there's no violence involved, whether it's a low degree of violence or a high degree of violence. There, your your position the is that line, there was no violence. There was no violence, really. And we have to look at also the bigger picture, which is the disbursement acceleration program. Mm. Again, we go back to the issue of activism in the university. Are we trying to send a message to stand up that they should now sit down, mm -hmm. that they should forget about uh, such kinds of creative measures so that we can be civil to, to the ones who are exploiting us? Us. Mm -hmm. Definitely not, because we will continue to fight. Did you want for the this rights. kind of coverage, though, or reaction from from people? Uh, do you think I, that this is ideal that people are talking about this, and, and therefore course, uh, we're magnifying the, well, the real issue? You know, it's a given, Rod, that any disruptive behavior could be met negatively mm -hmm. by the public. Mm -hmm. And the basic challenge now, not just for Stand UP, but for other activist groups and individuals, would be to what? To ensure that a proper explanation and contextualization is done so that uh, we could achieve what Abad wants, which is sober discourse, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this kind of discourse is the thing you that we would want anywhere. to explain to uh, mm. the public. Uh, you, don't, you don't think that's going to get anywhere if it's a kind of a, you know... I'm sorry? You, you don't think it's going to get anywhere if it, if it was the usual cordial if, discourse, as you would say? Yeah, because by the nature of the Bali Taktakan, uh, there is a limited time to engage Secretary Abad. Mm. Uh, perhaps that would partly explain why it's a blessing in disguise that I'm not there because I would have wanted to engage him personally a little, a little uh, to debate the points, but I don't. I, there's really no time to mm. do that. So that's why there is a creative measure that was done. Okay, and I'll, throw the message question, was across. I'll throw this question to, to both of you, uh, professors. Um, do you think there's a need for the students to apologize? You first, uh, Professor Guy. Um, you know, I, I, I I would leave that to the students themselves. I, I hope they are cognizant of the fact that they have been asked to apologize both by the professors uh, and the student council. So even their, their students are calling. But in a way, you think if they apologize or didn't apologize, you, you don't have a position in that? May I, may I say if it were me? Sure. Yeah, no, no, no. Kasi yeah. I, I'm very careful, again, because of my work in uh, violence against women. I'm very careful about what I would ask someone to do eh, in mm -hmm. terms of a wrong that has been done. Yeah. No? But if it were me, I would apologize. Okay. Professor Danny, your well, thoughts. Do you think uh, that they Stand should UP, apologize? Or? Yeah. Well, Stan UP has already issued a statement that it will not apologize, mm -hmm. and it stands by uh, what happened uh, that fateful night of September 17. And of course, as faculty advisor, uh, they did not get my uh, mm -hmm. permission for that kind of a statement, but I generally agree with that kind of a stand in the mm -hmm. sense that uh, they did something that, that was within, was their, within the, the bounds of, uh, 
well, whatever you call it, decency or restraint. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, it's not as if there was a physical, uh, it's not as if Abad had cuts and bruises because of uh, a bruised ego maybe, yeah. but other than that, there was nothing that was uh, done against him. If at all, it was just simply a symbolic protest. If they were to apologize to me, they would be apologizing on the basis of not throwing and aiming better. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's say if it was an, an egg or it was something a little harder than a, 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 a coin or a little harder than, a little bigger than a coin or a little bigger than, than a crumpled piece of paper, do you think then they would have gone overboard? Well, if it's something that would result in cuts and bruises and something that, was, that would seriously injure, then perhaps, yeah, perhaps that's the answer. But mm -hmm. remember that Esperon, uh, then the chief of staff way back in 2006, mm -hmm. yeah. was pelted with eggs before. And uh, it's not as if our colleagues from the Department of Political Science at that time who invited him uh, and the Third World Studies Center that invited him uh, asked the students to apologize. Okay. There was not much hula baloo about yeah. it, but okay. this time at the School of Economics, there seems to be a different uh, seems to be perception. More emotion behind this, uh, I think, this yeah. issue. Now, I would think so. Now, I'm going to ask this uh, to both of you. Uh, okay. You're both activists, right? You were active, or you still are. You still are activists, uh, but of a different spectrum, I guess. Uh, um, do you think there's a middle ground to this, um, Professor? A Danny, middle do you think there's a middle ground to, to this? Uh, yeah. Are we just talking about levels here? Re just levels? Uh, and, uh, I mean, for example, well, if, is, it, is it all right to, sh to, to throw invectives and to shout profanity? Ah, okay. We're talking of strategies and tactics. Yeah. I thought it's ideolo ideological. Mm -hmm. Because we have to look at strategies and tactics as being based on ideological persuasion. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, uh, there are certain ideological persuasions that would allow you to engage the powers that be in the legal front, mm -hmm. okay? So in that particular aspect, then you have to abide by certain norms, and that's what Stand Up did. Because, for the record, Stand UP is a legal organization, despite what the police and the military are wont to say, mm -hmm. okay? Or the intelligence community mm -hmm. is wont to say. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, there is restraint given to Abad as regards uh, what happened. There was no physical injury mm -hmm. that was apparent. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said a while ago, Stand Up engages in a continuing assessment mm -hmm. of what happened. And it even reached out to the School of Economic Student Council to mm -hmm. find out really if there were people who were injured so that mm -hmm. they can get the entire picture. So mm -hmm. I don't, so we have to give due credit to that mm. particular student organization and, what and not just ground? focus what on is that, that What would have been the acceptable uh, action in, in, that, in that scenario, given all the emotion, okay. all the bottled up emotion and all the, the context yeah. that you would say, given what that, would have been probably acceptable to everyone? Given that we now have the benefit of hindsight, mm. I can tell you, Rod, that the more ideal scenario would be for Abad to engage the students, mm -hmm. okay? A little longer, uh, a little, little longer, longer perhaps. Yeah, yeah. because uh, there had been cases of protest actions where the ones who are the subject of a protest action would uh, get out and then talk to the student talk, leaders. Yeah. And it's not as if uh, he, uh, these leaders get vilified or, you know, mm -hmm. hurt mm -hmm. by engaging. But what Abad did based on the video was to just simply, just they whisked away, away to right. the nearby SUV. Mm -hmm. That's okay. it. Professor Guy, uh, do you think there's a middle ground to this whole uh, We thing? had it before this violent incident. Mm -hmm. Because in UP, it's always the middle ground. In the mm -hmm. sense that, not that we will have any ideological... The beauty of UP is it's a palenque. Yes. Palenque we, of ideas. Pa ideas, okay. yeah. You can have the extreme <laughs> right, the extreme left, the atheists, the extreme Catholics. The elite, the masses. The, uh, yes, the middle mm -hmm. ground was that we have had a beautiful symphony of discordant, divergent voices. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they come together once in a while in a good note, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes they separate. Mm -hmm. But the harmony of just letting, and that's what I keep saying, U UP is radical not because the we have communists walking our halls. Mm -hmm. They walk our halls because everyone from the communist to the reactionary capitalist mm -hmm. walks our halls in order to give their ideas freely mm. and safely. And without fear. And without fear. And that's just my middle ground. Mm. Ang hinihingi ko rin lang naman ay respeto para doon sa lahat, sa, sa kaisipan ng bawat ita. Because that's mm. the lifeblood of the university. Mm -hmm. 
And so for me, that, that, would have, that should be the middle ground. Mm -hmm. And I don't think an appeal to civility is a bourgeois, silly little appeal about manners. Mm -hmm. It's a principled appeal as to how we want to run our intellectual and academic lives mm -hmm. in a situation of real freedom for mm -hmm. each one. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, we, we've unfortunately reached the final uh, <laughs> portion of our show, so we have enough, just enough time for, for your final words and I guess final message to our viewers no, who yeah. may be uh, probably, uh, they're probably struggling also to figure out whether, uh, what, what side to take on. So, uh, Professor Danny, uh, your final words to our televiewers. Yeah, as faculty advisor of Stan UP, I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that what the students did is within the bounds of what for lack of a better term, decency in the sense that it's not as if Secretary Abad was physically harmed uh, uh, that fateful night of September 17. Mm -hmm. Please understand that there is contextual accuracy to what happened and we have to look at the bigger issue here. Things do not occur in a vacuum. So therefore, we have to look at the evils of the disbursement acceleration program that has been declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, but which the chief architect in the person of Secretary Abad has insisted to implement and has even up to now continued to do so even if there are clear indications that it's illegal and it tends to elicit patronage and promote patronage politics uh, in Philippine society. Activism in UP is alive and well thanks to these student organizations and we seek your understanding and openness so that we can look at the bigger context. Thank you very much. Good evening to all of you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Danny. Professor Guy, yeah. your final words? My, my final words would be this. Um, I really think that uh, morally, violence was done to Secretary Abad, perhaps not severe. And I think that if you just look at social media and other forms of media, there are quite a lot of number of people who have agreed with me, even the comments on this show. So I think there are two things that need to be requested here of Stand UP, which is to perhaps listen to some criticisms and reassess um, what happened. Because the bottom line is we all agree that there is a problem with the specific issue of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I do. Mm -hmm. And with the greater issue of corruption. Mm -hmm. And the real question is, did this particular incident help our common cause? Or did it give a, a, a nalihis, no? We went. Mm -hmm somewhere else which isn't good mm -hmm. and perhaps gave not such a good name to activism no? because activism is not just about your ideological position it's about fighting for what you believe mm -hmm. and all of us should fight for what we believe i would like to believe all of us should be fighting against that mm -hmm. but even if you want to fight for that then that is part of what the university should allow you to stand for mm -hmm. and therefore I really think that this might have given us a black mark mm -hmm. in terms of those who would like to be yabang and call ourselves <laughs> activists. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Professor Guy. Again, thank you very much to our guests, Prof Professor Danny and uh, Professor Guy. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here in Opposing Views. Thank now you. let's see the uh, viewers' op opinion through our online poll. Is the recent confrontation between UP activists and Secretary Butch Abad justified? Those who said yes, 35% was justified, and those who said no, 65%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion on today's most relevant issues. I'm Rod Dipomoseno. Good night, God bless, happy weekend.